All right, we are live on camera one and camera two and continue. This meeting is being recorded. All right, we're ready. We're rolling. Right. We're rocking. Awesome, everybody. Welcome. I'm going to share this so everybody gets the opportunity to watch us live. Okay. All right. So, welcome to the lunch bunch at the Spiritual Neighborhood. The Spiritual Neighborhood is a grassroots community project of the Council for Families with Children, dedicated to the quality of life for the body, mind, and spirit for the integration of the happy, healthy human. And today you have the four of us, uh, Deborah, hey. Elizabeth, me, and we have Betty, our awesome Betty. So if, if we're talking and you have a question or a comment or even some something you want to share with the group, just uh, let uh, Betty know and she'll raise her hand and we'll answer your question. So today is Techno or Tipsy Techno Tuesday. I have my latte with some wonderful Kahlua. There we go. So that'll get us started. And, Li and Elizabeth has a beer. What do you got, Deborah? Beer. My protein shake. <laughs> with alcohol in it. No, it doesn't have alcohol. It doesn't. <laughs> it won't fit in my bottle. It's full. Everybody, and we've had some amazing shows these past few weeks. And if anybody has a comment or a question, they didn't get to ask this is the time so i don't have alcohol so this is not an excuse on why i'm doing this but i'm fixing to do something crazy are you ready if you want to ask a question and you don't want to take the time to type it you can call me on my phone 972-494-3232 oh my god so i'll repeat it 972 Four nine four. It's sitting right here. Three two three two. And you can just talk to us directly, and I'll let you talk to everybody on the screen. Yeah, we're crazy. Okay. We're rocking it today. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So whatever y'all want to talk about, I'm just. You know what? I don't want to talk about the virus. I don't want to talk about racism. I don't want to talk about anything like that. Um, I want to talk about. I don't, I don't know what I want to talk about. What do y'all want to talk about? But I don't want to talk about anything like that right now. It's bumming me out. Uh, I think we talked about some positive stuff. Like we, we have Sandra Larson coming back in July, right? And we're going to be looking for somebody to, to actually come on the show with their animal. I don't know. Did we set that up? Is that firmed? Yep. Okay. So. Awesome. You already have well, a I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I already sent the confirmation to you. You already put on the calendar and she already con contacted me with two thumbs up. That's why I don't um, remember it. Once it's done, I forget it. Out of sight, <laughs> out of mind. That's why I do my to-do list like that. I don't wait. I don't like to-do lists. If it's on a list, it's got to get done. I got to, you know, because there's always stuff that piles up it's if you done. don't. Yeah, you do. Martha's coming back, and I had a good meeting with Martha. You guys are going to just be freaked out. Martha's the weirdest little duck I know. I just love her. <laughs> she is a balance between logic and emotion and the being in the material world and in the spiritual world. I mean, she told me the funniest story. She, she got in trouble in Catholic school because she wrote an essay about how being in wearing a uniform made her feel like she was in a robot camp. <laughs> oh my god, okay. robot camp. Yeah, so this is why this is funny. So she had to wear these uniforms in Catholic school all these years, and then what does she do with her life? She goes to law enforcement, and what does she wear? A uniform. A uniform. <laughs> I just love her. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, I think I think she's going to lead us in a lot of good directions. So I'm excited. I am excited that she's on board. I am too. And she's done a lot of interesting things in the past 10 years because, you know, Martha really kind of turned away from acknowledging her spiritual side and now she's starting to embrace it. And Martha, if you're watching, I know she's not watching. She's out serving papers right now. But Martha, if you see this, I told you so. Told you so. <laughs> so na, 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 na. I was right. I love being right. Don't you love being right? <laughs> Don't you? Yeah. I know I you do. do. I know you do. <laughs> I do. I 
right. Yeah, but there's so many people that are never right. They're just wrong all the time. Bless their hearts. <laughs> I know so. I really like it if it's a reading, you know, and you're, you know, oh, you yeah. go through that and you just know that it's right. You just know that it's right. Mm -hmm. I love that. I do. I really do. If I had a nickel for every time someone told me during a reading, whether it was a serious personal reading or at parties, and they said, oh my God, you just nailed it. That's the exact words. My slogan. Nailed it. Nailed it's always, oh my God, you really nailed that. I'm going to get that tattooed Absolutely. on my forehead. But I would be wealthy. I would be wealthy for every time I've heard that. Yep. So I like it. I do. I like hearing I it. I do too. I do too. <laughs> so. Especially from the naysayers. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. And you know why? Because I used to be one of those naysayers. Oh. Well, yeah, but I think we need, I think those people are valuable. They're, the people like that are needed to keep us on our toes. It's a challenge. It's, it's, it's good. It helps to stretch that muscle. Well, the thing that I always like to um, play devil's advocate with is, is this person talking to me in a non-emotional way and just regurgitating information? Or are they tying us into their own egos? And that's one of the things I always mm -hmm. like to discern. And so the only ego people get for me when I'm doing readings, like, I don't care if I'm right. I don't care if I'm wrong. I know I am. So deal with it. And that, that's about as much ego as I give them. <laughs> you know, that's a lot, I understand. But yeah. I, I don't have any investment in whether I'm right or wrong. But I do like hearing I am right. That's fun. It, it is. is. Absolutely. So, Betty, do you like being right? So, course <laughs> how often <laughs> how, sorry, except when i'm wrong i'm uh, not admit it. yeah how often is that betty not very often yeah you know why because we're wise old women old yep. women wise wise women old oh, oh. old wise old women <laughs> Elizabeth, yeah. she, she's so funny oh my gosh i'm not old we're not old I just glitter because I because because I'm spiritual. That this hair just glitters because I'm spiritual. Well, I must be really spiritual. My hair is just freaking out, it's freaking out. Well, look whose head it's on. That has something to do with it. <laughs> Can't wait for you to go to sleep because you're zinging all over the place. All the oh my god, electrical <laughs> shock! Ah, 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 I wish she calm her shit down. Ah, ah. Oh my god, yeah, because my hair is really not that curly, and I it's been like oh my god, you're traumatized. It looks like you <laughs> stuck your finger in a light socket. What do you mean it's not curly? It's real curly. Oh my goodness, well that's that is just too funny. Oh my God! That may, oh my God! That just is so true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Alright. Okay. All right. This dog I, that that um, Doug's bringing me to look at tomorrow. Let me tell you about this dog. She was shot. Okay. So I want you to follow my follow my line of thinking here. She was shot, and the shrapnel is still in her left leg. All right. So we're going to back up a couple of weeks. My son was showing the kids something. I don't know what he was showing them, but he was using the stuff that they use in nail guns. And somehow or another it shattered, and he has shrapnel in his left hand that they're just leaving. They're not taking out. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Take it back many, many years. My very first dog, who is about the same size as this dog, that dog was yellow, this one's more white, was shot in the left hind leg and bled out and died because he crawled up under the house and nobody could get him out. So do you think this is my dog oh. coming? Do you think this is my dog? I always say this is your dog. <laughs> this is your dog. For sure, it really is. Okay. I mean, this one's going to be able to, to have the life that it should have had. So here's the final cherry on this story because my granddaughter won't see this. I'm, I'm pretty sure she won't see this. The dog's name, guess what it is? Crystal, which is my daughter-in-law that just passed. That was her name. A lot of connection. So, 
Think this is my dog? Yeah. I will be shocked if it's not. We'll know tomorrow during our little meeting. But I would be shocked. Very, very shocked. But who the heck would shoot a dog and leave them at the lake? I, I, I'm assuming it was an accident. I'm assuming since it was in the left leg, rear leg. But still, oh my God. No, if you leave that animal there, that, that's it. That was deliberate and, and intentional. You think? I just, I'm going to tell you, I have seen some horror stories Some going through this adoption process. I didn't want to, to bring this up yesterday with April, speaking of which, was that not a phenomenal show? April? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She has so many other skills that I really was not aware of. So she's going to be a full-time member. Yes, so she's so coming back. Last Friday, last Friday of the month. When I retire, I may just give her the council of families to have to run because she's really the perfect person for it. So, did I just say that? What the hell? Well, she <laughs> knows her stuff. Yeah. Things just come you out of my mouth. Out I did. I have no filter today. None whatsoever. I get like that when I'm around Martha. Martha, Mar Martha has this energy that just went, it just goes, and it just explodes. Any type of filter I might have had during the day and er anything and everything just comes out of my mouth. It does. That's why I can't wait to go somewhere with her and just walk the property, whatever. That's going to be great. But no, she's, oh, yeah. she's phenomenal. But I didn't want to bring this up yesterday because I didn't want to detract from what she was saying because I'm not trying to compare the two. But going through the adoption process of a dog, I swear to God, it's like getting approved by the FBI. I can't imagine trying to adopt a child. Seriously. So... You know, yeah, that she was talking about how difficult it, and it should be. Yeah, absolutely. It should be that difficult for dogs as well, all animals. There is there's so many, there well, there's so many scammers out there. I had three instances where I was on groups where there's like, if you need to rehome, you know, and it's supposed to be free or, or, yeah. or a small rehoming. They do recommend that you charge a rehoming fee if you need to give your dog away so that people don't come and get these dogs and put them in dog fights and things of that nature, sure, yeah. you know, which makes total sense to me. But they're saying do background checks. And I'm like, yeah, if you're doing background checks, you need to be calling me. What kind of background check are you doing by, you know, by the way, you know, but these people want you to send the rehoming fee and then they'll bring you the dog and people do it. They do it. And I'm like, are you insane? You know, and then they complain no. because they got scammed. Well, yeah, because you basically stood here and said, here, take my money. Let me give you my money. <laughs> You know, and um, yeah, you have to be careful. Yeah. And I found two dogs. People are desperate for money right now. I found two dogs that had been adopted out through a legitimate rescue, and someone had taken those pictures and they were posting those pictures trying to rehome the dog, you know, mm -hmm. and get money. So I mean, it's amazing to me, even though I have worked with criminals in a professional capacity since my early 20s, it amazes me how the criminal mind works and how they can put together these scams and ideas and you're like if you would just do a job and work that hard you'd be rich you know because <laughs> it's so well, there's much lots of different scammers out there for different things all kinds of things i have a friend that just went through a, a major scam and i don't have her permission to talk about it but since i'm not saying her name i'm hoping it will be okay because i think it's really important what you're talking about deborah the scammers um you know that uh, I, I didn't know a certain detail about this person that my friend was talking to. And so when she was telling me things about him, it didn't click. And I was like, that doesn't sound right. And I asked her if she had a picture of him. She said, yeah, I said, send it to me. And went on, I don't know if you guys ever do, did, done this, and you might could do it with dogs too, is Google uh, image search. You can, mm -hmm. you can take the picture, I saved it on my computer, I brought up a Google image search, and I, I dragged the picture into it, and it brought up a picture of him, and it said he was a different name, exact picture, exact picture, said it was a different name, and a different country, a different birthday, and what I found out later on was that she said, you know, Gail, since you didn't, I didn't tell you about this, and you showed me that, I now believe that this is a scam because when I the the people that were trying to get into my uh, checking account information on, at my bank came from the country that he's that you, you found that he was from. 
Yeah, can there's, you imagine? No, there's all, Dr. Phil does a lot of these shows sometimes, and I always mm -hmm. watch because I like to see how his investigators work and stuff because I'm not a huge fan of Dr. Phil personally, but I like to see the process that they go through. And they come up with, but this is what gets me. I, I, there was a woman on there one time, and she had sent this man over $75,000 over a year period. And they were wow. in love. They were going to get married. She's never laid eyes on this man. And they said, and, and they proved to her, they showed her the paper trail and all the investigation steps they went through. And she goes, I don't care if he showed up today, I would still marry him. A lot of women say that. What the hell? A lot of women know that. Why? What? What is going on in their heads? I don't know. I don't know. Of course, a lot of women believe head. they're not worthy. So because yeah. they're not worthy, they will, whether they believe it or not, they have set their bar very low. Or they feel like they're trying to do a good deed or good service, mm -hmm. or they can change that individual and you can't. That's not an individual to be changed. It's the same way as having a relationship with a man that, or a woman that's in prison. I see. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. I really don't. I just. But you don't. know how they brainwash you in certain um, churches or um, organizations and stuff where. You mean like the, about like our, our media brainwash? Well, that, yeah. But our cults and that? stuff like that, they brainwash people so much that they can't believe anything else. Fortunately for my friend, she didn't lose a dime. Thank God for that. We, we caught it before it got to that point. Um, but she was emotionally invested because he came across so real to her. And mm. that's the thing. They're attached not to the person they found out who they are, but to the person they thought they were. And it's almost like losing somebody through, you know, that process of realizing that, that you know, it's almost like a death to them. Uh, so, I, you know, the emotional and talking really in depth with my friend and also other people I know that do this, it, it really it does play a big mind game on them and they don't know how to rewind it and make it and see it what it was before. They have to work from here on and it's a mourning. It's a loss. Well, it's because in their mind, and this shows you the power of the mind. So, you know, and, and most of these women are seen as weak people. That's what's really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. they're, they're seen as weak and broken and fragile, but their minds are so powerful that that whole situation has become a reality in their head. So this is the, the, what I go back to when I'm working with clients, either spiritually or with the coaching, is that don't tell me you're weak because there's no such thing in the brain. The brain is not weak. It's a desire that's weak. It's your desire and then your commitment to yourself to make the changes because that is so real to them. I mean, these women will talk about how they know them. They know them and they can, they, they can, they can feel them, you know? So well, they play big mind games with them. They certainly, they talk from, from, you know, for months and months and months and you know, they don't actually see them They're just texting back and forth, I, I, you know, so I don't understand it, but I'm not in that shoe and I, I'm not going to judge my friend or anybody else for that doing it. I hope and I pray for them that they realize that they deserve better and, you know, find people that are in the United States. And we still got scammers in the United States, but a, a lot of these people that I see doing this are from different countries. Um, and, but there are also some in the United States They we definitely got them here as well. So my thing was, if you find somebody in the United States, you can find find them a whole lot easier than you can when they're overseas. So well, be careful of that. It's indicative of a huge gap again in our society. There's so many gaping holes in our society uh, that people make fun of or they find them entertaining because they're on all the shows and we're talking about it on our show. But what is missing in those women's lives and men too, men do the same thing, um, that they would actively go out and search because they're finding these people and they're letting these people find them usually on the internet there's a gaping hole there in their lives that they're connecting with this person who doesn't exist instead of connecting with people around them where are we failing these people because we are we're failing them as a society that's what it boils down to they're lonely they're alone. Right. Most of them are very alone. They, they, they may have children, grown children that, you know, are like, oh, this is a scam. Well, obviously, my, my mother lives with me, and we talk about what she needs. And 
I give her my viewpoint, she gives me hers, and we come to an agreement, you know? If I told her this guy's a scammer, she would, she'd listen to me. So what's missing in those, those sibling and parent relationships? There's a lot of holes there, a lot. Well, what I've seen with some of them is that these relationships have existed for months prior, you mm -hmm. know, to the, 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 the siblings finding out. So by then, these people have really manipulated their minds and have control over them. And it's really hard. They want to believe their kids, you know, but it's a sad thing because, uh, and if you do watch it, like I do on Dr. Phil, a lot of them didn't know for months that it was going on. Some of them knew immediately, but more. Well, that right there is a huge red seen. flag though. The fact yeah. that their mother or father is doing something for months and they don't even know. I get a lot of these cases in my PI business. I, it, oh, wow. it, and it, it, it's really heartbreaking, you know, and they always bring me in after the money's lost most of the time. So I just had a call yesterday where that we're getting in ahead of the game, thank God. And but it, it's huge in uh, indications of breaks in the family ties and stuff. And the kids, sadly enough, you know why they get involved because they see their inheritance being spent. And that's of course. Yeah, that's what gets them interested. And, you know, I look at it this way. If that's what it takes for them to get connected back to their parents, great. I always look for the upside. So, right. you know, but how many of these people don't get help, don't get connections, get scammed? And, right. You know, that, that really that hurts they lose my heart. Everything. And they lose everything. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Well, when you start hearing things like, well, my phone is broken, I can't FaceTime, or I, I, I'm out here in the ocean working on an oil rig and I can't can't call out or I can't FaceTime or I'm stuck in, you know, a country where they don't have technology. I mean, there are so many excuses why they can't talk to you uh, or see you because if they, if you saw them, you would see that the picture they sent you is not the, the person that they're talking to. So one of the things that they, they say the red flags are is when they say they, they can't FaceTime you, they're only going to send you a picture. Uh, some will talk to you. It, uh, there's one on the show that the guy said he was from Brit Brit Britain, and when they when they were listening to the phone, him speaking through the phone, he sounded like he was from Nigeria, not <laughs> from. Yeah, so that was a big thing, and uh, you know, so there, there's a lot of st there's a lot of flags. We if we really want to fight in true love, you know, make sure these people are open. Like we talk about this show, we're open. We're an open book. You can see us, you can hear us, you can talk to us, everything. You can get in touch with us. If you cannot see, hear, or get in touch with these people overseas or even here in this country, go on, move forward. Save your money, save your heartache, save your time, move on. That's that's my advice. I don't know if y'all have any. Well, you know what, my, my the, the most interesting story on these scammers that I've heard is the one with the polygamy family. Wow. I love that show. It's one of the few reality shows I watch. Have y'all watched it, Sister Wives? I love that show. Oh, I, I've seen yeah. a little bit of it. I love that show. I don't know how they do it. I couldn't do it. Well, I find it fascinating. That's why I watch it, it because there's so much emotional dynamics and psychology that goes into that. You know, you, you take the spiritual belief and put that to the side. But, I mean, that poor man, yeah. I feel bad for him. I don't think he's living the life. I think he is run ragged. I feel bad for him. He is married to, to four women that they don't take crap. <laughs> they, just, they fight for their, for their rights. Their you know? But one of the wives got involved with an online scammer and she got catfished and you know, and it's really created a lot of havoc in their marriage. And I think it's four or five years later and they're still working through because now she has this relationship with her husband that was damaged, but it also damaged her relationship with the three other sister wives and the 22 children. And I'm like, damn. Oh, oh, <laughs> Jesus. oh, oh God. Oh no. I mean. Oh no. I, that's yeah. a hell of a commitment. I'm like, I think I just say, okay, well, I have fucked, oh, I have screwed up. I'm moving on. You know, I've just got to start over because this is just too much to repair. I mean, sometimes you just got to build a new that's, bridge. That's two football teams right there. No oh, players, so. man. So, so, no, thank you, but no. 
But I find that whole concept that intriguing. Why, 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 and hormones and oh Jesus, no. I could never well, be a sister wife, but I could be. Keep, I want brother husbands. My children, thank you. I want brother husbands. I want seven brother husbands. <laughs> One for each day oh, of the Lord week. God. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? You have one that does the cooking, and you have one that takes care of the house, and you have one that makes money, and then the second one that makes money because you got to have extra money. Okay, so that's four. <laughs> right. So, so then you got three slots that you can fill in with specialties. You know, so talk the about. Specialties. <laughs> I mean, talk about teamwork. I don't know if I want to go there. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no! And, oh, and don't forget, oh. we're gonna have a pool, and I need. I, <laughs> I, we need a cabana boy for the pool house, so that will be eight on the team. No, <laughs> I, don't believe, I don't believe you. Don't have some alcohol in that drink, right? <laughs> no, this is how my brain works. This is me without crack. <laughs> get around Martha. Martha. Seriously, Martha. Seriously. She's been around Martha. This is when I'm allowed to think too much. To Martha. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> think about it. What woman oh would not God. want I that? I see the checklist. Checklist about that long. Yeah, okay. Uh, who was in charge of fixing that roof? <laughs> who was in charge of fixing that roof? And all the hands point to one, you know? How fun would that be? <laughs> oh, have mercy. Oh, my God. Look, Ooh. Elizabeth's getting hot. I wonder why. <laughs> I, oh, my goodness. My mind just went in the, just like, oh, my goodness. It went in the gutter. Just, yeah, it went in the gutter. I saw that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> really quick. Really yeah. quick. That was a That's fast we had move. That was a fast move. But, Lord, I think it was the specialty thing. <laughs> that would be something that is just like specialty. Yes. Well, well and your qualifications. <laughs> how many references do you have? Oh, my they'd God. all have to be good Lord. at foot rubs. They'd all have to be good at foot rubs because I can't be on the phone saying, "Come over to the yeah. main house. I need a foot rub." You know, it have to be. Whoever. <laughs> Here's what it would sound like. Because oh, you know how whiny men can be? Oh, let Tom do it. I rubbed your feet last night. Yeah, it's not my turn. You're not my mom. That's not fair. I've had to do it three nights in a row. Get oh, over it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. No. I'm not doing it today. You know, that'd be my luck. I, they'd, they'd all be little whiny, little whatevers, and, you know, we'd have to, all yeah, this drama yeah. going on, you know. I'd go. Well, I just want to remind yeah, everyone I, watching, we are the holistic hardware store, even if we are talking about things off, off the cuff today because it is Tip C Techno Tuesday. Our tool today is laughter. Get over it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Laughter is a good thing. Free thought is a wonderful oh, thing. Just just sit down and just think whatever you want to think and let it come out. Pretend you're Dr. Seuss. Look what Dr. Seuss did with free thought. Look at all the cute books he came up with. And you can call in. I'm giving my number out again. 972-494-3232. Call me. Tell me I'm a nut. Tell me I'm wrong. It's whatever. I don't care. <laughs> so... Call in with your questions, comments. So you know what I would like to questions. hear? Yeah, questions. And what would you like to see on the show? You know, we have some other new ideas coming up. We'll share soon. But what? what I'd like to see some good-looking men on our show. <laughs> we don't have enough men. It's we, not a bad idea. We have Isaac. He's nice looking. We have John. John Capello. He's nice looking. John Capello. Yeah. yeah. Very nice looking. That's the Both only... of those men are very, they're very intellectually yes. attractive. Yes. Well, I, no, they're, I'm, I'm not talking about they're, that. They're good to I look love at. Their aura. They're good to look at. I love their aura. <laughs> we need some good looking men. And they're men. easy on the eyes. Yeah. Easy on the they're eyes. Easy on the eyes. 
We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have Chuck Murphy on the show next Wednesday. I haven't seen have him. Isaac the following day. So I haven't seen him in a long time. Two coming up. Is Chuck still easy on the eyes? He used to be real easy on the eyes. I think so. I think so. <laughs> I think he's just the more mature looking individual. You mean old? I don't know if he still has his beard or not. You mean old, right? When you say mature, yeah. you mean old? old. No. <laughs> No, he just is. He, I think he ages well. I think he ages well. You're making me hot. I had to get my fan out. Uh, just watching you fan made me well, hot. I'm telling you, all of a sudden. Ooh, baby, you make me hot. It's getting hotter outside. <laughs> Ooh, baby, yes. baby, you make me hot. 98 today. 98. <laughs> it so was. My fan, my fan is here constantly running right by my feet, so. You should have seen Martha and I at our meeting. We okay. met at Sonic, and we're so she's staying in her vehicle, and I was staying in my vehicle, and we rolled down the windows, and we're hollering at each other through the windows, <laughs> and we're running our engines because it's oh, yeah. hot, you know. And so yeah. she has this big ass truck. I mean, it is huge. It's huge, and um, God, I have a really deep voice, and so I did go ahead and just get in the truck with her because I was losing my voice from yelling so much and everything. But we were still at least five foot apart by sitting back against the doors and stuff. Nice truck. So we're gonna let Martha do all the driving if we go on field trips. Works for me. <laughs> <coughs> that works for me. Her, I mean, seat's, like her seat's warm, but they also cool. They have an air conditioner built into oh, the seats. Awesome. When does that? How many can fit in her truck? <laughs> five at least. Five. Oh, cool. You know, if we're not social distancing. Four for social distancing. It's big, 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 big. I'm telling you. So I like a big awesome. truck. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't care if I drive or not. It, that's not important. I don't. I prefer not. Well, you drive me crazy, drive. so that should be enough driving for anybody. That's enough for me. I, I would think so. I mean, that's a goal that's to hit. That's my driving skill. And that's a yeah, goal. I think to... Ed McMahon had the right idea once he started. Doing a lot of his commercials and stuff, he said, "There's no reason for me to drive. I have a limo." Like, yep, yeah, that's what. Yeah, oh, buddy, that's what I. I agree. I used to be a limo driver. Did you know that? I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not I'm kidding. Not even surprised. I'm not even surprised. It's an interesting story. A friend of mine had a tour business, and he had limousines, and he had charter buses that did tours, and you could take them to the uh -huh. casinos and stuff. And he had four limousines, and sometimes he didn't have enough drivers. So I would put on fishnet stockings and a little mini skirt and a tuxedo jacket with a little white thing, and I would be his driver. And when he needed extra, oh my it was awesome. I had a great, but you know, now that I think about it, I never, had, I never had a commercial license, so I was doing it illegally. I just realized. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, now you know. But now you know. Yeah, so when I when I had my son, he picked me up from the hospital and brought me and my son home in the limousine. We had the best ride ever. He had champagne in there and snacks for me to have on the ride home, bringing my son home. That was awesome. But I love the name oh, of his company, nice. Joe Dallas. Joe Dallas Tours. He was awesome. But I look cute, my so, little. I like I like that. I like the idea of being chauffeured. That's that would be my goal. That's my my goal. Now, there are some stories. I know, I, I just, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. A lot of people need to drive because they want to be in control, not me. Not me, I like being driven. I like riding. I like that. Just <laughs> let me, y'all just talk amongst yourselves, drive, and just let me, you know, especially if I'm going to a gig or something, it does help. Well, Scott, trying to get ready for the gig. yeah, Scott drives me to a lot of my gigs because it's not so much getting me there. It's afterward. I am so high absolutely afterward yeah. that I literally drove home from, <clears throat> from Fort Worth one night from a gig and wound up in Royce City because I missed my exit because I was just so, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, so he takes me a lot. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes coming back from McKinney. Uh, I had to be careful sometimes if I was going down central because if I was going down central, I would miss my exit and I would just be heading on downtown. Yep. Because you know, I came from there. Like, oh my God. All of a sudden I'm in Richardson thinking, oh my God. Oh wow. You went, what am I doing here? Yeah. That's early dementia. Because you're thinking. Uh, 
Yeah. And 75, it doesn't almost matter what time of day or night you drive it, it is still a very, very busy highway. That's just early yeah. dementia. Well, by the time, by the time, <laughs> By the time we left, it was 10 o'clock. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Old like, woman, the time to go to bed. Oh, <laughs> dear. No, but when you well, leave there. you've been there since 5 o'clock, that's five hours. Oh. Six hours. It, it, is. it is. It's oh, a long time. God. That's mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> I did it. I did a That's gig a once that was seven hours, and I, I felt like someone had beat me. I was so tired after that. You know, and I got no, I, I got fed. I don't do those anymore. I got fed. I got lots of breaks. It was not a, a fast pace because it was an all-day thing. It was inside. I wasn't hot. I had yeah. no idea how tired I would be. That was exhausting. Exhausting. Well, the worst gig I've ever done in my life, I mean, literally, the worst gig I've ever had was at the House of Blues, and I was... I love um, the House of Blues. I forgot I mean, I knew who I was working for, but they put me right next to a speaker, and they had oh. bands. Oh. So you couldn't okay. hear me, I couldn't hear them, and I sat there for almost two hours next to this speaker where nobody could understand a word I'm saying. I had one read. And I just kept telling myself, I'm getting paid, I'm getting paid, I'm getting paid. Yeah, because it's depressing. I know for a long time after, that, that ear really gave me problems because I was so close. And I was literally having to go like this, yeah. you know, and turning that way. I had that was the worst possible. I thought, you people do not understand mm -hmm. when you're when you're setting the, the, the scene up for where people need to be sitting. You don't put them right next to a freaking speaker. That's not what you do. Well, you know, I have a... The best one I've ever done though, was actually in a gypsy caravan okay. wagon. Okay, I am so freaking jealous. That just makes me so jealous. I just, that was oh. the best. That makes me jealous. It was. It was awesome. We should go in and buy so one. We, we should buy one. Well, this lady said, how did you get this? And she said, well... I was looking through Amazon and I saw this and I told my husband, honey, would you get that for me? And he said, well, yeah, sure, I'll get that for you. Well, and they shipped it from well, overseas. Wow. Said, oh, my God. How much money oh does God. she have? I said, well, where do you keep it? Oh, we keep it in storage. We only bring it out for Halloween. I'm going, oh, oh my God. God. Lord. Oh, oh God. Lord. So I had to park in the back and come through what they called the servants quarters oh. to walk all the way through the house to go outside to get into this wagon but it was an honest to god gypsy wagon it had a heater you know one of those old-timey right 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 right, right right she put uh, those really cool lights all in there and i was right next to uh you know they had the like a twin bed behind you and a table here and it was halloween and it was cold it was one of those rare nights where it was really kind of foggy and the clouds were low and it was you know located in a a, a really eclectic beautiful neighborhood so there wasn't a lot of uh, cars or things like that because most of the people had this lady's house but it's the first time in my life that i read for someone and he was he was very nice he was very you know he was very i just liked this guy a lot i mean i really did i liked his energy and he said may i give you a tip and i said absolutely i was going to say something and i said yes sir absolutely and he said hold on to this and put this in your pocket and i thought oh, okay no so i you know took took what he had the you know whatever the cash was and i put it in my pocket and then on the way home, I thought, you know, I need to see how much that was. I think it was a hundred dollar bill. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love things My like first that. First hundred dollar bill tip. Those and are I awesome. I really like this guy, but you mm -hmm. literally had to walk up the stairs to get into it, and it was rounded at the top, and oh. it did have where the coachman would sit in the front, where you would literally take the yoke and yeah. you know, connect it to it's two the, different. It's the real deal. It's the real it deal. Was Gorgeous. I they love those. Like, yeah, I found it on I find it on the Amazon and I just said, Honey, buy that for me. And he said, Okay. Oh, I thought, okay. This is just great. 
I love that. That was the best. I had a very yeah. weird experience at a gig once um, uh, that's always made me think a lot about how to uh, make sure that I don't ever take this for granted and get too casual. Because it is parties and, you, and sometimes you tend to, to forget that we are spiritually based and this is our, our real deal. And I was at a party one night and the hostess came to me. She goes, I have a friend that's been dying to meet you. And, I, you know, and pulled me away from my table because it was at a private party in a home. And we went to another room and this man came in and I just got an electrical shock when he walked in the door. And he looked at me and he grabbed my arm and I don't like being touched. I'm a touchy person. I, I touch my friends when I'm talking to them and stuff and you know, but I don't like being touched. And so that was off putting to begin with. But when he grabbed me, he immediately, he didn't let go of my arm. He threw it down just, and he goes, Oh, you're real. And the minute he did that, I felt this incredible pain in my right leg from my ankle up to my knee. I mean, it was, ex it was extraordinarily oh. painful and I didn't think too much about it, but he had just gotten there and he left the party immediately. And Why? I, well, I asked the hostess, I said, I thought your friend wanted me to do a reading and she goes, well, he said he was ill and he had to leave. And she goes, that's, but you know, he was really excited about getting a reading because, you know, he's a professional reader and he's into metaphysical stuff and he likes doing things with Ouija boards. And, you know, she just went through this litany list of all these things that he was involved in. Well, when I got home, I took off my clothes and I had three scratch marks that went all the way up from my ankle to my knee. Oh my God. I mean, they were bad. They were bad. And it took almost two months for those scratch marks to heal. And I have always said, okay, never again, never again do you let anyone touch you, number one. And number two, you never let your guard down. Never, ever, ever. So. Ever. Not when you're doing a party. You never let that guard down. Yeah. Ever. So. Going to yeah. and leaving. I mean, it's the same way. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, so. He that to you. Oh, what, Betty? Why did he do that to you? Um. Oh, gee, I don't know. I don't want to answer that. <laughs> I mean, I have an answer for that, but. I respect that. I respect that. I, it's just I don't want to be off-putting to people with my personal beliefs. You know, there's a time and place for me to share that, and I, and I just don't want to be off-putting with that because I have some very specific ideas about that. So, <clears throat> the light of the Christ around you. Oh well, so Elizabeth's going to make us go there. Yes, I believe that he walked on the dark side. That's of, it. That's it. That's all. I mean, yeah. seriously. That's, yeah. That's all I got. Uh, that he walks, he walks on the dark side. I walk on the light side, and he found that offensive. So right. I have a lot of chills right. going on in me right now. Ooh. Ooh. No. 1995. Yeah. You too can get a reading. I do believe in spiritual warfare. I do. I, I believe in spiritual warfare. I do believe that there's, there's a battle that we have to fight at times, especially if we're going to be true to our commitments and to our, you know. Our focus. I've had I have other stories about like that, but they're not involving parties. But I've I've had several occurrences like that in the past five years. So I believe. I do believe. I do believe. I do believe. <laughs> I believe. I do believe. I always think of Natalie Wood in that the Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street when they're telling her to believe in Santa Claus and miracles happen. I do believe. I do believe. I do believe. <laughs> You know, and the cowardly lion says that as well. Oh, that's the cowardly lion. Believe, I do believe, I do yeah, believe. Natalie Wood goes, I believe, <laughs> I believe, I know it's silly, but I believe. That's what she does in the Miracle of 34th Street. But she still gets her wishes too. So she pulls on his whiskers and he goes, Oh, it's like, Yeah, that was real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love that movie. That's a good one. That was a real, that's a really good movie. I enjoyed that. See, look what we talk about when we just ramble around. I know, go from one thing to another to another. We are, we're so well-rounded. There's so many things we know. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I got that. <laughs> See what you do. You bring
bring out the worst than me. Oh my God, you're just like pushing oh, all my buttons. The reason why I have to wear the pants, I'm just telling you. <laughs> you know what? I, I thought about getting some Depends so we could go to the drive in movie and I wouldn't have to go to the bathroom, you know? And, you know, but I just couldn't go there. I don't think I could use them. I don't, you know, it. I you don't. could if you had to. Let me tell you, you can if you have to. That's and it's not that bad. I mean, people get real. It's it's just not that bad. It, it's just another, you know, it's another phase. My mom relied on them. It it got her to where she was able to get out. And anything that helped her where she felt comfortable in her sure. own skin to get her outside, absolutely. Well, and it, it's just no big deal. Also. I think a lot of checkers when I was going through the line were looking at me like, oh my God, you poor thing. <laughs> so I had the pins and I had, you know, butt paste and <laughs> you name it, anything, you know, that would pertain to protecting my mom, you know, it's like, God, you just don't look like you need all that stuff. Okay, you brought it up. So, I'm going there. I bought it. I'm going you there. Know, so yeah. we used to do surveillance for hours. I mean, we could be out there on surveillance for yeah. hours. And as a yeah. female, that's excruciating. So I I had for years this little thing that looks like a cup. It's like this, mm -hmm. okay, like you're cupping water, okay? And right. it had a little hole in the center and a tube that came out. And you would get out of your vehicle in some private place, because this is like when you're out in the country and you can't leave or whatever, because we did a lot of... Right. And you would pee. It was awesome. <laughs> and that's the only time you I... would do that. That's the only time I've ever had penis in me. The only time... <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. How easy would that have been? Just, okay, just give me a minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. There's some place in Florida. What is that... What is that... What is that uh, drive where you can you can cross the Everglades and you have you cannot get out of your vehicle because the alligators? You know, there's alligators on either side. Well, you just sit on the edge of your seat and you is. aim the hose out the door and just <laughs> go for it. Oh my God! <laughs> my mom got well. She was with her. I think that was her third husband, and they that's where they had gone was down there, and she had to pee. And so, <laughs> fortunately, they had gone to I think it was well. KFC, and they had that bucket, you know, and she used that bucket to help her get through to the other side. Now that's my mom. My mom was very creative, and I'm I'm just horrified. Oh my God, you're kidding. You no, right? you do what you oh have to do. We were going the way to and the. That's what she said, honey. You do what you have to do. In we were circumstances. We right? were on vacation, and we were on the way to the Wolf Sanctuary in New Mexico, and there was like a sixty-mile strip there that is just a two-lane road, no way you're gonna stop. It was twenty-five degrees, and I'm like, I gotta pee. Yeah. I, I seriously. <clears throat> yeah. So Scott gets out and he takes a two-liter Coke bottle, pours the Coke out, cuts the bottom off. You can squinch it up, and, you know, it wasn't very comfortable, and I'm out there, and I'll be damned. We're out there with no cars or nothing, and all of a sudden, I'm out there trying to pee, and here comes a truck. <laughs> it figures, doesn't it? Doesn't that figure? So I just, opened, blue, here comes. I just opened up both doors oh and stood God. between the doors and said, have at it, mister. <laughs> I got a white moon shining. Just let it go. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I have no pride. Well, you, you <laughs> do what you have to do when, when you're in that situation. Of Absolutely. course, I recognize that now. Yeah, yeah. You know, but there's so, what you know, that kills me with that commercial. Oh, you don't want people knowing that you're doing this or doing that. It's like, get, you know, y'all just need to grow balls or something. Because Who cares? It's just part of, you know, you do what you need to do to protect your family. That's, I mean, exactly. And it's I mean, not a big deal to go to the grocery store and buy those things. It's just, it's just an item. Well, you know, and like with my butt hanging out, it's not like people have not seen butts get real. Men pay good money for it sometimes, you know. So. Oh, my God. Butts <laughs> and moony people. Oh, oh my God! You know, back when it was you know streaking you butt out and moon people. I miss the streakers. The streakers are always oh, yeah. fun. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I love the streakers at ball games because I was always well, bored. Then you you well with the streakers you would actually see the men's shortcomings. Let's put it that way. <laughs> There's a lot of short men. A lot of short men. Shortcomings, yes, yes. Lots. <laughs> 
Well, I could write a book but, about know, that. Just, it's like, <laughs> oh, okay, you know, that's like, okay, well, yeah, obviously you need help. And it, 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 I don't know. Some things really embarrassing, and some things it's like, oh my God, get, you know, get a life. Okay. I'm getting a line. Where are we on time? Have we just, have we fiddle farted around? I think we're, I think we're, I think we're at the end. We're what? I flag. I'm at the end. You surrender? I surrender. Surrender. I surrender. <laughs> I surrender all. So we're, we're closing, ladies? <laughs> are we done in? Yeah. yeah. Let's close it. All right. So we thank everybody for joining us for Tipsy Tuesday Techno. Yeah, wait till we're really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you for sharing your time and energy with us at the Spiritual Neighborhood Lunch Bunch. We are a community project of the Council of Families for Children. To contact any one of the hosts, Elizabeth Deborah or myself, email us at spiritualneighborhood at gmail.com and don't be shy to ask to be a guest on our show. Until we eat again, it is lunch, right? Be safe and be whole. And thank you for joining everybody. Bye. Hope we didn't scare you Bye. off. <laughs> Bye. Have a great day. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow at 1215. The recording has stopped.